Hi, I am Georgios Papadopoulos and welcome to this video on six Lopin frame delivery modes defined in RFC 4944. So far, you have seen the six Lopin adaptation layer and frame format, as well as the header compression and fragmentation and reassembly mechanisms defined in RFC 4944. Today, we will continue with six Lopin frame delivery modes the mesh under and the root over, or per hop fragmentation and reassembly mode. Both approaches are widely employed in the smart grid networks around the world. The first mode takes place at the six Lopin adaptation layer, where the nodes require the knowledge of the routes at the layer 2 based on MAC, whereas the second mode does it at the layer 3 based on IP. Let us now dive deeper to see in detail the two modes. In the mesh under mode, the routing and forwarding operations are performed at six Lopin adaptation layer based on layer 2 addresses, and thus the IPv6 header doesn't need to be unpacked. Indeed, the network layer assumes that all nodes share the same prefix where multiple link layer hops may be employed to complete a single IP hop. To forward the received fragments to its destination in mesh under mode, the nodes require knowing its address, the final destination address. Furthermore, in order to perform the reassembly operation, which is done only at the destination node and not at each intermediate one, the node requires knowing the address of the original source, the originator address. Considering that at each forwarding step the link layer destination and source addresses are overwritten by the addresses of the next hop and by the node performing the forwarding, this information regarding the final destination address and the originator address needs to be stored somewhere else. Toward the same, six Lopin defines the mesh header in RFC 4944. In addition to the addresses, the mesh header stores a layer 2 equivalent of an IPv6 hop limit. This value must be decremented by a forwarding node before sending the frame to its next hop. If the value reaches zero, the frame is discarded silently. Finally, the mesh header defines the V and F bits that indicate whether the originator or very first address and the uh, final destination address respectively are 16-bit short or 64-bit EUI64 addresses. Let's take an example to see how it works. Let's assume that node S uses the mesh under approach to deliver a frame. Then it must include a mesh addressing header with the originator's link layer address set to its own, and the final destination's link layer address set to the frame's ultimate destination, in this case of node D. Furthermore, it sets in the layer 2 header's source address field its own link layer address, and it includes the forwarder's node B link layer address in the layer 2 header's destination address field. Similarly, when a forwarding node receives a frame, in this case node B, it checks the mesh addressing header's final address field to determine the final destination according to the following three options. If the node is itself the final destination, it initiates the reassembly of the IPv6 packet. If it is not the final destination, the node then reduces the hop's left field and if the result is zero, discards the frame. Otherwise, the node consults its link layer routing table, determines the next hop towards the final destination, and sets that layer 2 address in the destination address field of the layer 2 header. Finally, the node changes the layer 2 header's source address to its own link layer address and transmits the frame. 
These operations are performed in each intermediate node before an IPv6 packet reaches its destination. The second approach is called the root over or per hop fragmentation and reassembly mode, where the routing and forwarding tasks are executed at the network layer, the layer 3 based on IP. Therefore, in route over, each link layer hop is an IP hop. In a root over 6 lopan network, the received fragments of the same IPv6 fragmented packet are expected to be first reassembled at each intermediate node, then decompressed to reconstruct the original IPv6 packet, pushed to layer 3 to be routed according to a routing protocol such as the RPL Ripple, and then compressed and fragmented again before being forwarded to the next hop. Let's take an example to see how it works. Considering again the same topology where node S is the source node, the fragmented IPv6 packet is transmitted to the next hop node B based on the IPv6 header and the routing protocol that is running on top. Upon the reception of the first fragment, node B employs the incoming reassembly buffer to store the received fragments and it initiates the reassembly and decompression operations to reconstruct the original unfragmented IPv6 packet. Then, contrary to mesh under, it will pass the original packet to the layer 3 in order to check the IPv6 original source and final destination headers. If node B is not the final destination, it will push down to the 6 lopan layer again for compression and fragmentation operations. Finally, based on its layer 3 routing table, it will forward the packet to the next hop, which is node F in this example. The same procedure will take place in the rest of the path until the final destination is reached. 6 lopan employs a frame delivery mechanism that is ill suited for a 6 lopan root over mode where the reassembly and fragmentation of the entire IPv6 packet is required at every IPv6 hop along the multi-hop path. In the following, we are going to see the issues related to the 6 lopan per hop fragmentation and reassembly approach. First, in terms of network reliability, when a device receives the first fragment of a certain IPv6 packet, it initiates the reassembly timer, which is typically set to a maximum of 60 seconds. If all fragments are not received during this reassembly period, the reassembly of the datagram is not possible, leading to the received fragments being discarded from the incoming reassembly buffer. Note that if even one fragment is missing, the receiver cannot proceed with the reassembly operation. Next, we have the latency issue. Indeed, the reassembly operation at each hop significantly increases the end-to-end -end delay. Then there is an additional computation time to fragment again the previously reassembled IPv6 packet. As a result, the more hops in the path toward the destination is, the higher the end-to-end -end delay. Furthermore, the fragmentation process introduces inefficient resource usage since it requires large incoming reassembly buffers at the forwarding nodes. In fact, to proceed with complete reassembly at each hop, a relay device may require 1280 bytes or more of buffer space when considering IPv6 datagrams. Considering that sensor devices are extremely constrained in terms of memory, it will be possible to reassemble only very few complete IPv6 packets. Therefore, given several consecutive datagrams in the wireless multi-hop network, an ongoing reassembled datagram A may be discarded when a new fragment of datagram C is received, while the previous datagram A has not yet entirely been reassembled. Thus, such issues will introduce more losses in the multi-hop network. Finally, from the implementation point of view, according to RFC 4944, 
Only the first fragment of the IPv6 data packet contains the source and destination IPv6 addresses, while the following fragments are routed based on the datagram tag. This datagram tag is misleading since a tag is unique only to the 6 original source and the final destination nodes. As a result, two different traffic flows may be tagged with the same value which could introduce implementation issues during the storing of the fragment forwarding state. For example, consider that two different traffic flows in a multi-hop network traversing through nodes A and B may be labeled with the same datagram tag value during the fragmentation operation. Then an issue arises when these two traffic flows traverse a common relay node, node C. In this case, node C is confused, since it doesn't know to which next hop to forward the fragments to. In our video, RFC 8930 6-Lopan Fragment Forwarding 6LFF, we give an overview of the Virtual Reassembly Buffer, or VRB, based solution whereby an intermediate node forwards the fragments without reassembling first the original IPv6 packet. 